Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pete Perspective. My name is Pete and I just wanna extend a special welcome to you if you're new to the channel. Thank you for being here, thank you for making time. Um, I won't take up too much of your time, I promise, but I will ask if you could please subscribe to this channel, like the video, hit the notification bell, comment, and um, it really helps the channel out a lot. It helps out just, yeah, all of the things that come with all the YouTubes that we do's. So anyways, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about something that I think we all process, we all chew on, we all, it's maybe some of the struggle with, and it's just this art of dreaming. Now I'm not talking about dreaming as it relates to sleep, but dreaming about a better tomorrow. And I think it's just really something that I found uh, in my conversations with people lately, and I'm just excited to kind of debrief and talk about it with you. So let's begin. <laughs> About dreaming I've had a couple of conversations recently with my brother one with my cousin one with my aunt and my uncle just today and I just have had this like burden because I feel like people just we forget how to dream we really do like we go to work um, you know we start the week on Mondays a lot of us go to work we have nine to five jobs or you're in school right full-time and you're in school and working part-time and all these different types, sorts of things but we just get so caught up in doing the mundane things um, and it's not to say that those things don't bring life right there's a lot of life that comes with a career and a lot of life that comes with um, education and all these sorts of things but man like we can get so caught up in sort of the grind and the hustle that we don't allow ourselves time to just dream and the, the ability to dream some of us i'm a dreamer i tend my personality like i'm future thinking um and in some ways i'm thinking a lot about today and how that affects what could be in the potential future and so i just know that there are a lot of people who struggle with that um but i guess what i was saying was the ability to dream is really a position of privilege and so I want to mention that first because there are when you're in hardships right when you're growing up single mom three kids two kids um, single parent household maybe your grandparents raise you maybe you lost a parent maybe you're in an abusive situation right all of these different sorts of circumstances that we can find ourselves in um, that are not favorable right of course um, that are hard they're hurtful um, but you could lose the ability to simply dream because you can oftentimes just be surviving. And so when you're in a position where you just need to survive, you can suppress the ability to dream and imagine what life could be like if you know, money wasn't an issue or if your struggle with dealing with not having your dad around or your mom around wasn't an issue. And so the ability to dream really starts there. It's a privileged position and that's the first thing. Um, so if you are a dreamer, then you have to at least recognize, man, I'm in a position where, um, you know, I can dream and I and, and I have the freedom and the security. I think a really intentional dream, like a dream requires security first. And you need some sort of like safety before you feel safe enough to dream. And so, man, I just want to challenge you guys. I wanna challenge you specifically because I don't know if you, I, it's, I cannot afford to assume that somebody is speaking words of life into you, that somebody is saying, you are worthy of your dream. You are worthy and you're worth it. You're worth fighting for. You're, um, you have so much to offer. You have so much potential. You have so much potential that you can't afford to take your potential and put it up on a jar, or I'm sorry, put it up on a shelf you know, I'm thinking of your potential being in a jar and you just heavy jar filled with, filled with potential and you take it and you kind of just put it up on the shelf and you leave it there only to collect dust. And I just don't want that for you. I think that the best place for your potential to be is not sitting up on a shelf, but rather with you. Um, you can control your potential and you can control how you use it. And it's really hard to do, um, it's difficult, but man, like, what if money wasn't an issue? What if you could just wake up tomorrow? And, I, and again, this is all ideals. I recognize like we need money, right? Like I have to provide for my wife and my son. There are very real realities. I have the monitor right here, the baby monitor. I'm literally watching the baby monitor as I make this video because my wife's downstairs working out. So 
two things. Shout out to her because she's down there working out and my son's awesome. That's the second thing. But um, what was I saying? I don't remember. Just about being, you know, I just, we can't afford to let our potential sit on a shelf. We have to kind of act on it. And um, I think I was talking about ideals. That's what it was. We are all, um, the idea of dreams and what if money wasn't an issue, those are all ideas. We all need to provide. We all need income to live. Like there are aspects of that that are real. But to make the argument that because of that reality, you cannot or should not dream of a future that is better than your current reality seems wild. Like people, like at some point an airplane was a stupid idea. Like it was a ridiculous idea, right? And it wasn't, it was just so out there and no one thought it could be done until it was done. And then like now we're flying, you know, 150 people can fit on a plane and go across, across the country and that's a wild thing. And it's crazy. We, it's something we take for granted. But I just think all the time, I'm like, man, what is that next big idea? What's that next idea? Is it a, is it a product? Is it a, you know, is it com- a company? Are you really talented at building stuff, man? My freaking brother is so good at building. He just like randomly in the past couple years have gotten ridiculously good at like general contract type of work. And so I keep telling him like, bro, you know, start your own thing, start your own thing, start your own company. You can do it because you can make more money doing that. It's going to take a little bit of a, um, like, so he's making good money where he's at. He's in a comfortable position. He has benefits. He has all that sort of stuff. And for him to make that jump to full-time doing what he needs to do or like can do, you know, there's going to be a aspect or a timeline there that he might lose a little bit of income. He might like lose some security. He might lose health benefits and stuff. But ultimately, in the long run, the potential is so much greater than anything he's doing right now. And so I am a six on the Enneagram. I don't know if you guys are into Enneagram or not, but I'm a six. So I definitely appreciate and value security. For me, that's in finances, right? So when I, if our finances are good, I tend to be more chill, more relaxed. But if I know that things are tight, whatever, which more times than not they are, I'll be straight up with you. like. I, my wife stays home with my son and so we have to be very frugal um, with how we spend our money because we're a single in- income household. And so, you know, a lot of you may be stay at home moms um, and you know what that's like. So that's where we're at. But I just dream, man. I, I, I this a little bit of a just ideas. My ideas are kind of flowing off the cuff here, but I just want you guys to know that you can dream. You don't have to dread you know, I had conversations with people and they, some, some people just dread their nine to five, they're, you know, they work for the weekends and um, they get there on Monday and they're just instantly looking forward to Friday. And like, I don't think, I don't know what the answer is, man, but I don't think life has to be like that for everyone. Um, I don't think so. I think there has to be a way to live the life that you want to live. And, you know, I, when, when I say that, I just mean income wise from a financial aspect that you have enough to provide for what you need to provide for financially, but also love what you do. And so, yeah, man, I want to chew on that with you guys. I want to process that with you guys. Again, I'm not coming to you with the answer, but I do know that a lot of us tend to forget about dreaming. Like I want to challenge you just for a moment, man. If you're a husband and a wife, if you have a husband, if you have a boyfriend, if you have a fiance, man, like if, if you have a fiance, dude, what a great opportunity to sit down and say like what do we want our lives to be um before you even jump into marriage what do we want our lives to be sorry there's a little scooter that drives by yeah so we live in the city at an intersection so that's our life um but yes what a better time than before you actually jump in into marriage and just say what do we envision our lives to be if you're 50 and you're just over the hill and you and your spouse or your partner um, are just like, maybe you're a little bit older, you're kind of in the, middle of a, in, lo- in the middle of life, a little bit of a different season. What a great time to sit down and say, what do we want the rest of our lives to be? Do we just want to work and, you know, um, yeah, like what? It, it's just, again, it comes back to dreaming. 
what can you dream of a better tomorrow for yourself? You have the freedom and the ability to sit down and just say, what do I want my life to be? It doesn't have to revolve around a career. It doesn't have to revolve around something you went to school for. Like if you have deep convictions and beliefs and things that you value, if you want to, if I say, I want to spend more time at home, I want to spend more time with my family. I start with that, right? And I build my life around those sorts of things. And again, it's not, yeah, like I build my career, I build my days, my weeks, my months, my years. I can build it around that, that conviction of spending more time at home with my family. And so that means that maybe, you know, you're a freelancer or maybe you're doing something that has a little bit more flexibility. Maybe you, you're look, you go and look for a remote position um, as opposed to being in an office. Like whatever that is for you, I think that that's possible and that it starts with you having the space and the freedom, and the, you know, just to dream. And so uh, the biggest thing, you know, one, dreaming is a privileged position and just recognizing that. And then two, man, if you have the ability to dream, take advantage of it because there's a lot of people out there who are living to paycheck to paycheck, who are struggling, who are just, they don't have the opportunity to dream. And so, man, if you're in that position, just dream. Let's dream together. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Tell me what your dreams are. And if you have not taken time to dream, do that and then come back to this video and let me know because I want to pray for you guys. I want to um, just uplift you guys, encourage you guys. And so, yes, I just, yeah, more than anything, y'all, you already know. Your perspective matters. My perspective matters. Sometimes you just need a fresh perspective. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.